You heard that phrase before? You're all well, alive and well, and many of you have been born before 19, 1988. That's when the Nike swoosh came out with the phrase, just, just do it, just do it. In the scripture passage, we see that the Apostle Paul, early missionary and leader of the church, has spent his lifetime doing it. He's traveled all over the ancient world, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. Many have been empowered by his message of peace and justice and love and forgiveness and acceptance. He taught that God's love was not just for a select few, not just for the Jewish people that Jesus came from, not just for the, the men who were circumcised, but for everybody. Paul also had a way of getting people upset because there was a power stake in uh, being one of the chosen few. And uh, Paul didn't have time for that. Paul was one who stood up against the high and mighty and said, hey, everybody is welcome to follow Jesus. Everybody is welcome to follow Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're circumcised or not. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile or, or Astro, uh, Zoroastrianism or whatever, whatever it is you are. You are welcome to follow Jesus. He got in, himself in trouble for that. Paul ended up in prison, and this letter to the Philippians was written in prison. Paul uh, alludes to his prison experience multiple times when he's giving this story, here I am in chains for the sake of the gospel. Paul was in chains for daring to stand up to the Roman Empire and for the uh, Jewish puppet leaders over Israel. Powers that be didn't like Paul coming in and stirring things up. Well, the empire may have stopped Paul from preaching on the street corners and the synagogues, but they did not stop him from writing. His desire to share the good news and his actions to do it by writing letters have resounded through the ages, long after the power of the empire had faded away. Most of us don't remember the names of the Roman and Jewish leaders, but we remember Paul and remember his Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Just do it. You probably remember it as that advertising slogan coined by Nike in 1988. It was tremendously popular and led to the sneaker company raising their share of the U.S. market uh, in shoes from 18% to 43%. Just do it. The message was simple. No excuses. No claims that somebody wasn't able. Just get out there and exercise. Yes, they marketed their sneakers to elite athletes, but they also marked it, marketed them to the common people. Just do it. Do something to get yourself out there and exercise. It will be worth it to you, even if it doesn't feel like it when you're running that first mile. Just do it. By, encourages, by encouraging his uh, listeners to do just what he was doing, Paul made it clear that Christianity was not one of those mystery religions just a religion of pure contemplation alone. While philosophy and theology were important, while prayer and meditation were important, while regular worship was strongly encouraged, they were not enough. They had to be accompanied by action. Christianity professed alone in one's head but not practiced, was sorely lacking. Paul went places. 
He talked to people. He healed the sick. He argued his case. He encouraged people to support those who were needy. Paul did things. That very much reminds me of a method I use in my counseling practice. It's called behavioral activation. Can you say that with feeling? Behavioral activation. Used mainly for depressed people. It encourages folks to push ahead on the energy and activity front to help lift up their depressed mood. It's based on the idea that what you do affects your mood. For example, if we watch a sad movie, we're probably going to feel sad afterwards. If we engage in fun activities, we're more likely to feel happy afterwards. If we involve ourselves in watching a lot of violence, some people are going to disagree with this, especially young kids who watch a lot of violence, you tend to think in more violent ways. What we consume has a lot to, a lot to end up with how we end up being. We are what we eat. If you've been depressed or know someone or love someone who has been, you know that a common symptom of depression is a lack of motivation to do anything. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yeah. It's so much easier to stay in bed or lie on the couch. You feel miserable. Doing other things hasn't helped, so why bother doing anything different? Just lie down on that, on that couch and let life happen to you. Don't extend yourself. It's too dangerous. The trouble with lounging around in bed all day is that we're going to tend to feel worse about ourselves the longer we stay there. The tasks that we need to do aren't going to get done. We can get even further behind on our projects. People can get upset with us due to our absence. And there's a tendency when we're feeling sorry for ourselves, when we're just lying around in bed, to ruminate about all the ways we screwed up in the past. Rumination. It's one of the things I check off when I see a client each time. Are they ruminating? Are they perseverating, to use a psychological word? Are they caught in their own thoughts that go around and around and around about everything they should have done and didn't do? The minds love to go to the negative places where we've screwed up, and that can just make the feeling of wanting to lie around in bed all the worse. We just feel terrible. We are terrible. Therefore, let's just not do anything. And it gets worse. You're not going to exercise. And sleeping in bed all day, not being active, means that you're probably going to be up all night long, perseverating, ruminating again about all those things that are wrong in your life. Behavioral activation says that you need to get moving somehow, even if it's just baby steps in the beginning. Think of something that's easy to do, that will give you a quick win. Then get up and do it, even a little bit of it. After you do it, notice any changes in your mood. If you feel better, thank yourself for doing what felt like a very hard thing. And thank God for giving you the energy to do even that little bit. Here are some ideas of baby step activities that may help you. Go outside and take a moment to notice the nice things that you see. 
Look at the sky. Admire a leaf. Take a little walk. Call a friend. Do an arts and crafts project. Wash your car and then stand back and look at how clean it is. Make a nice meal and take your time eating the food. I love slow eating. Slow eating, where you taste the food, you enjoy it one little bite at a time. Behavior activation is one part that can help people feel better. It may not be a miracle cure. However, it can be a useful part of treatment, along with other forms of talk therapy, uh, medication, socialization, being with other people, diet, and exercise. The most helpful theory about depression for me is that it is learned helplessness. People who are depressed have somehow learned from the school of hard knocks that doing anything to better themselves is futile. There's no point. This was seen in a significant study done on dogs beginning in the 1960s. And I'm going to tell it from memory, so I'm sure I'm going to get some details wrong, but this is the gist of it. I want you to notice that these uh, studies would be difficult to do today as they involved harming animals. And we all know we don't want to harm animals, especially cute little beagles, and they were the mo ones who were used most in these experiments. But some phenomenal things were learned about human nature and depression. A dog would be placed in a two-part crate with a short barrier in the center, like a three or four inch barrier. Most self-respecting dogs could move from one side of the barrier to the other, just jump from one side to the other, especially if there was food at the other side. Boom, 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 boom. And then these lovely researchers decided they would electrify one side of the crate. So when the dog was in one side of the crate, the dog got a shock. That's not fun. What are you going to do as a self-respecting dog? You're going to jump to the other side where there's no shock. And so for a while, these dogs would jump, jump, jump as they move the shock from side to side. And then the evil researchers decided to electrify both sides. So no matter what that dog did, wherever it moved from the crate, it couldn't avoid getting shocked. And can you imagine what happened? Those poor little dogs just sat down in the corner of one of those crates and whimpered and took the shocks because they had learned pessimism. They had learned that nothing they could do would make any difference to make their life better. There was learned pessimism. There was a learned helplessness. Well, apparently the uh, researchers got some Jesus in them and decided to reverse the experiment. They turned off the shock. Our dogs didn't move. Because they had learned that life is difficult, that life is going to hurt us, that life is going to give us shocks. No matter what we do, we might as well just lie in the corner of the cage and let nothing and just let life happen. Does that sound like the person on the couch? Yeah. They're depressed, just like our dogs. Well, blessedly, the researchers went further in reversing the experiment. The dogs wouldn't move by themselves. 
But the researchers picked up the dogs and dragged them from side to side, whatever it took, until the dogs learned that it was safe to move around the cage again. And then the dogs began to get a sense that, OK, life is all right. We're going to go from one side to the other, get the cookies over here, get the cookies over here, and we're going to feel better. The cage was re-electrified re on one side. And uh, most of the dogs had learned that they had power, that they had control, that they had efficacy, and they jumped to the side to avoid the shock. Eventually, some of them were just jump, 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 jump to avoid the shock. And they were, you could see it in their faces, they were as happy as could be. They had learned optimism. They had learned hope just from getting away from the shock and not lying there anymore. Yes, it's worth it to get up out of that couch, to get out of the bed, to get off the easy chair and do something to make a difference in our worlds. It's worth expending a little energy now to reap a larger reward later. It's worth doing something to help other people or even help ourselves. In this world, the song says, we have real troubles, but we have overcome the world through Jesus Christ. We have more power than we realize. We weren't created by God and given life to refrain from living it. Now, for those of us who are not depressed or not depressed at the moment, I think there's still something to be learned from behavioral activation. We need to extend ourselves to try something new, to try something harder, to try something challenging. John Kennedy said, we don't go to the moon because it's easy, but because it's hard. And they got to the moon. They wouldn't have gone if they thought it would be easy. Try something challenging. Actively invite friends and family to church. You may get some no's, but there may be one or two yeses in there for people who just get excited. They come here and they say, this is what I need to hear. This is what I need to feel. This place gives me the energy to go out and be a better person and live a full life. You never know if you don't ask. Try a new job in church. I think we're coming up in the Methodist Church on nomination seasons where people get on the phone and say, hey, how would you like to be on the finance committee? And you say, ugh, another night of work. Oh, boy, what are we going to do? Now we're going to get stuck in that committee where we have to figure out how to pay the bills. Or you can look at it and say, well, I've not really done finance before. Maybe that'd be, maybe that I could use, I could do that. I can, I, I can ask people for money. I can figure out how to make all the negatives and balance and positives balance out to live within. Maybe I could do that. Help with the Sunday school. The more people in the Sunday school, the more the kids are going to get one-on-one -on -one help. You don't necessarily have to teach, just offer to help for a while. I'm sure the teachers will be glad to have you. Count collections after the service, or count collections however they come. We need people just to do that very simple task. Volunteer to landscape. Are there any trustees here? Would you turn away somebody who brought a shovel? No. no. Write letters to shut-ins. 
Yeah, write letters to people who are, who are not feeling so good. Take a class in something. I got my community college of Baltimore County booklet that shows me all the classes I could take, uh, either as, as a senior. Am I a senior? Yeah. I get tuition free. Just pay the fees. I could learn Russian or flower arranging or welding. All kinds of things I could do. Work in the food bank, sorting food, asking for donations. We've got uh, our own organization here, the Cockeysville Food Pantry. We've got, uh, Barbara, what's the name of the organization in town? You can. You can. And you're looking for help? Always. Always. OK, you can do that. I uh, have, have some clients who volunteered in things like UCAN, Assistance Center of Towson Churches. We had a group over in Parkville where I was a pastor for a long time. You can always use help. Plant native plants in your gardens. Keep the native bees happy. Keep the biodiversity going. That's something you can do. Deliver meals. Run or walk a 5K. Maybe you start with a 0.5K. <laughs> Tutor kids. Advocate politically for causes you care about. Most politicians I've known have said, send us letters. We really want to hear what you think. The opportunities are endless. The point is, we just have to get that bit of energy and do it. Having said all this, I want to thank those, all of those of you who are in church today, who are participating in our video service. You're here. You showed up today. You came. You needed to be here. You made the effort. You behaviorally activated yourself. You just did it, and you were present. I want to thank you for that. So many people don't go to church anymore. I talk to, talk to quite a few folks who tell me that they believe, but they don't participate in a faith community. By saying they believe, I think what they're saying is that they accept the uh, doctrines of the Christian church, they accept the idea of the existence of God, uh, but there's, not, there, there, there's a little more to the Christian faith than just intellectual acceptance that, yeah, there's a God up there. If we believe in God and do nothing about it, frank to, frankly, we're practical atheists. We're atheists for all practical purposes if we don't live like God exists and that God cares. That's why I'm grateful that you were here today. You are not just believers in Christ. You are followers of Christ. Now, maybe you think you have so much farther to go, you'll never get anywhere close. Friends, at least you're here. You're connecting your faith with action. I want to affirm that. And I want to affirm everyone for your presence here and online today. Do you want to grow in your faith? Do you want to feel better? And do you want to contribute to God's kingdom? Just do it. And may the God of peace be with you. Amen. And let all God's children say, Amen. Amen.